A very successful method for catching carp, and one that we say used a great deal, is PVA bags. I want to run through a couple of different methods. There's a method I use myself, and Samantha, one of our consultants, is going to show us her method as well. Start off on the, the tarp I like. I do like small PVA bags. I don't like the scenario where a carp is pecking away around the bait with the chance of a mouthful of line. I very much want most of the bait to go in first time. I'll show you the type of bag I've been using quite a bit this season. Utilising maximum action pellets. Very, very quick dissolved pellet these are. What I do with these though, rather than use them in pellet form, once they're in the bag, i just pour a few in there, and all over the table. Once I've got some into the bag, I then crush them up, turn them into a powder form. The situation you get from that once you're presenting it on the bottom, rather than lots of pellets there for the fish to pluck away at, with it being down to powder, you just get a cloud effect and you get the soup effect. Lots of visual stimulation, but not a lot for the fish to eat. Once I've crushed a few pellets in there, I normally take a couple of boilers as well. And very often I have a couple of full ones, and I'll also break a couple up. I prefer the 20 mil boilers for breaking up rather than 15 mil because they're that a little bit softer in the middle. It does release a little bit more attractant into the water. So a few little bits in there. I'll put a few more pellets over the top. Again, just push them together. Break down very, very quick they do straight into the powder effect. Right, I'll drop the lead in next. I do try and keep the lead to one side of the bag. You see a lot of people bury the lead right in the middle of the bag, but keeping it to one side, you know that once that goes into water, the heavy side is always going to go down first. So I know by wherever I put the hook link, I'm not going to be trapping it underneath the lead. You see people trying to get the bags really tight at this stage. I don't bother, once it's in there, just screw the top round, and a little bit of PVA tape, just tie it off at the top. I do find the tape easier to use than the string, and it also is a little bit more multi-purpose for strings and everything else. Just quick double overhand knot on that, and trim the surplus bits away. Not essential to get rid of this, but just nice to get them a little bit neater. Right, with the bag still being relatively loose, uh, you can get the lead fall away from that very quick and the whole lot start floating around. To tighten it up and enable you to cast a little bit further, just compress the pellets a little bit more into the bag. Quick lick of the corner and stick it round and down into place. Doing it this way, you can make the bag whatever shape you want. Just tease it down again. Just a little bit of moisture, not a lot obviously and stick it over. In deepish water, again you get the situation where the lead comes away before everything's hit the bottom. There's ways around that, you can double bag them, you can triple bag them, or another little trick I like to do. Oh, you stick the PVA tape on the side and bind it up. Just hold it together, you can make that as thick, as tight as you want. And again, to seal that, just moisten the end and stick it down. And there's a finished PVA bag. When I come to use that on the rig, here's a rig already tied up, ready to accept it. Put the eye of the lead, which is protruding out the bag, onto the clip. Little safety rubber in place. And then using a baiting needle, I pass it through on top of the lead so that the line's never going to be trapped. Tease it through there. The needles hit a boilie there, so just juggle it about so you know you're only going through pellet. Out the other side, then pull the link into it. Right, so there's the finished rig. Very quick and simple to set up, no chance of tangling loads of attraction for the carp.
you notice on there I've not got leg core on there or tubing because there's nothing wrapping around to tangle it doesn't need to be there I've seen comments in the past about if you don't use tubing you fetch scales off fish we don't use tubing when we float to fish him very often float to fish and use six foot nylon hook links it's not really an issue that one if I thought it was going to be causing damage then I wouldn't be doing that but doing it that way, no tubing, no leg core, it's very discreet on the bottom. A little bit of fluorocarbon there, just everything blends in nicely. Mm -hmm.